Hello, my cherubs, my sweet little potatoes. How are you doing? <laughs> I don't, what am I talking about? Straight away, it's gone weird. Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland, and I'm accompanied by Vinny Andre Newland, who is underneath the desk. Eating the pigs here. It's a bit grim. But hey, he's also got a bone, so you can choose between the two of them. So, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. A uh, couple of bits of business, what should I say? It's very, it's very formal, isn't it? Let's start with <laughs> the business. Number one. Number three, number nine. Uh, any questions? So it's like a town meeting or something. So uh, first of all, before I tell you what I've been up to, um, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be going through newspapers today. I signed up with Press Reader, which is an app, which is uh, has... A lot of the world's newspapers in there and you can read it read the newspapers and stuff um, and magazines I've been with them before in the past but the only issue <laughs> the only issue is the content of the news is okay how should I word this not always the most positive now I know that Perhaps I'm not always the most positive in these podcasts. I do try to keep it as light-hearted as possible. I'm not here to to be a downer for people. So, but but I do at the same time. I do tell talk about real life things that are happening with me, and it's not all well. Just being a human being, it's not always going to be good, is it? It's not always going to be pleasant. Please, Ant. So, um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Let's see if I can find some new stories that are, I don't know, interested. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. So, that's what I'm going to be doing in this podcast episode. It's Monday, the 15th of April. 2024 and I'm still 53 years old for four months and 11 days so May, June, July, August yeah, wow saw my dad yesterday for lunch Um, other than that not a lot going on uh, neighbour asking me to help them, so I helped them today. Bit of a bit, bit of a, a, puff, a kerfuffle, but hey, it's done now. Um, boo -boo 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 -boo. My neighbour downstairs got rushed to hospital with an asthma attack. So that was strange. It's, like nearly every weekend or she gets going to hospital I hope someone gets I hope she gets some help I'm not going to go into details but just she needs some support she's only young she's still a teenager and she's got no support and she gets the support during the medical emergency but she needs ongoing support because of her medical conditions so we said medical medi not not medical conditions Medical conditions. Medical. I don't know why I said it like that. So, I hope she's okay. And she sent me a text asking me to come down. About ten to two. I had my phone on. She rung me, but the phone didn't... Basically, I had the phone turned off onto mute. Because still some of my friends... My friend's friends phone me like weird hours of the morning drunk or whatever 
which is this this disturbs my sleep but what i do is i have the radio on at the weekend or i have music if the phone rings the music stops it's weird like what is it musical chairs really but musical sleep musical rings i don't know and that normally jolts me to realize that someone's ringing and also if there is something going on in the building Vinny wakes me up which he did I don't know how long he was trying to wake me up for but he woke me up about 10 past 2 so he probably heard the ambulance arriving uh, I heard movement downstairs so she's back so she's okay well I hope she is I'm going to need to let, ask her give her a ring anyway the The internet's been playing up. So I'm now sharing my internet with downstairs. Because just until she gets her own internet. And I don't know, is that slowing it down? It's already not particularly fast, but it's now getting to the point where it's buffering during like Netflix. And Netflix only needs about four or five megabytes a second which is like really low and I'm I don't know I'm just a bit confused I'll have to uh, try and figure it out because boxing's on at the weekend and I do not I will not I refuse to have that interrupted early hours in the morning Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia in America and it will be I already know who's going to win Devin Haney's going to win sorry sorry to break it to you but he is so even though the odds he is the fate he will always be the favourite I think uh, up to the point where maybe if he fought someone like Tank Davis I reckon it's going to be pretty much 50-50 Tank might get the the nudge, you know, as far as uh, having better, being more of a favourite. But I think Devin Haney could outbox Tank Davis. He just knows how to. He's he just he knows how to win. So does Tank Davis, because he's unbeaten as well. But I don't know. Devin Haney seems to be more the more complete more complete fighter maybe not the most exciting to watch but he's just he's kind of perfection in a way in a sense as a boxer rather than a fighter as a boxer he's he's supreme he's he's delicious <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a weird isn't it if you're going to put it into food terms he's exquisite he's an exquisite boxer anyway um i want to talk about boxing because i know well i could talk about boxing but i'm not going to what i thought i would do as it's monday and to give loads and loads and loads of notice I thought I would do a question and answer Friday. This coming Friday. Won't be live, it'll just be or could it should I do it live? On Facebook? I don't know. No, I won't do it live because then I've got a brush me hair and also have to grow some hair as well so because I'm a baldy now I'm not completely bald but I do have follicle issues these days which I never used to the hair that I do have is still pretty thick and curly unfortunately because I remember I used to have hair all the way down to my lower back 
Now I've only got hair on my lower back. It's weird. Nice thick curly leading down to me crack. So I was thinking do a a Q and A on Friday. So if you've got any questions, please go to my Jason's is it Jason's boring group? Jason Newland's boring group on Facebook and ask me a question there. Or if you wanted, you can well, that's probably the best, yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. So I'll put a I'll put a thing. Uh, do a questionnaire or do a thing on the thing. When I've done this, I'll do that because I've only my laptop's over there. I'm using the iPad for this because this has got the app on uh, for the newspapers, so I can't look at the laptop right now. Although there is room, but it would be kind of banging into the microphone and stuff. So I didn't even want to do that. So I'm going to do that on Friday and I also wanted to talk to you about something <laughs> and some of you will already know this potentially some people that have contacted me in the past and found me perhaps to be a bit of a cold fish I don't mean to be um, but I'm not very I'm not very good with people. It's becoming more and more evident. I'm really good with people and then I'm not. Give me a certain situation and I can really, I might come across as being really super friendly and, you know, full of life and that, but that's not consistent, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if I want it to be, but I guess, yeah, I probably would like it to be a bit more. But I noticed over the last month, I've had some situations where I've had people constantly knocking on my door. Neighbours and people like asking for help and or just visiting. And it got to the point where I started getting anxious in case someone knocked at the door because I didn't want anybody to knock on the door. It's not just the knocking, it's the result of Vinny screaming with excitement. Now that's not his fault, he's, he's a dog, you know? It's a mixture probably of him guarding his territory, protecting me, although I don't believe that he cares enough to protect me, but more likely he's protecting his territory or he's seeing it as a chance to escape as soon as that front door goes maybe someone better than me will come and take him home I don't know what's in his mind but having people in here it's just too much I can't handle it can't handle it very occasionally you know once a year maybe twice a year but every day or every other day or like multiple days in a week just uh, no and I find that the again this isn't very light hearted stuff but this is true truth I don't know I don't know why um, I mean I was diagnosed with an emotional emotionally unstable personality disorder as well as um bipolar affective disorder so I got those two diagnoses I don't mention the personality disorder very often hardly ever to be honest because it's personal reasons for that some people can some people don't like hearing about bipolar especially if they've had they might have had their own issues with a loved one and stuff and they really just don't want to have anything to do with anybody that has that which is understandable it might sound <clears throat> it might sound uncaring or harsh that someone that knows what it's like 
and the scene that would not want to have anything to do with someone going through that but I do I kind of get it now in a sense of I wouldn't want to go f I'd never ever want to be around anyone that's uh, like in the drug world it's like taking drugs and stuff never ever or anyone that drinks excessively alcohol don't want to be around anyone like that ever again like in a in a friend situation I'll talk to anyone I don't care but I couldn't handle going through that again I've, I've had that for years not me doing it like it's you know it's just being there for someone else and well I've done my fair share over the years but I'm just saying that wasn't the situation so I can understand if I I mean I've I've known a lot of people that got mental health issues and it is hard to be around them sometimes. It's a lot of fun sometimes as well. There's someone with like bipolar or some some mental health issues that, that can be so funny at times, like seeing the world a little bit different, you know? Seeing things you know, from a different angle very quick perhaps the complete opposite to me because I'm obviously very very slow very slow I said to my dad yesterday I said um, you know you probably just think of me as just being a bit of a loser not a I don't work I don't you know it's not how you were raised and it's not how you try to raise me to be like this you know it's, he's a very um, conscientious and very hard worker his whole life he's retired now he's nearly 80 but and I said but you know one day when I'm dead you know one day you'll see that I've I've done something worthwhile with my life but you just won't find out probably until I'm gone because then you'll see online you see what people are saying I hope people are saying nice things and then he said yeah but I'll probably die before you I said no that's not the right answer the right answer is you're proud of me now you're already <laughs> it's like you got this I was like you'll be proud of me when you find out like, like no you could tell me you're proud of me now but no he's never been able to say that to me you know the only person ever 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 to tell me that they were proud of me was my friend Noel I remember the moment it happened because you know I've been waiting my whole life to hear it is I just finished the NLP course National Neuro Linguistic Programming I got used got to tell you what it means because now with the AI, NLP is now called the Nash, uh, Natural Language Model. No, na NL, Nash, Natural Language Programming or something like that. So it's taken on a much bigger, a different meaning now. Um, anyway, so NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I did a course and a hypnosis course and then I did two NLP courses and a hypnosis course. And I did some therapy with someone for the first time. And I used the room upstairs in the comedy club. And he asked me how I got on afterwards. And I told him, and he just said he was so proud of me. And it just meant so much. Because, he's, you know, this was back in about probably beginning of 2000. I'd say, and he'd known me since 1991, and I was 20 years old when he first met me. He was about, he was in his early 40s, I think, and he he's around the same age as my dad, roughly, kind of give or take a couple of years, about the same kind of age, and he, I was a bit of a problem child, to be honest. I don't. I had a reputation 
on the comedy circuit for perhaps not being very nice. And they mistook my persona on stage with who I was as a person. Because as a off stage, I was... No, no, sorry. I was nice on stage. Off stage, I was horrible. <laughs> no, I was... Off stage, I don't know. I was a, I was a 20-year-old with hormones and living in a big city and with mental health issues I didn't know about and it was yeah it was it was a weird weird situation and I didn't know how to make friends with people I didn't know how to act in public um you know the first time I noticed what well, I realized that there was something not quite right with me not the first time <laughs> oh blimey not the first but there was one particular moment and I think it was 1989 and I was standing I was in London and I had this little job on an agency and it was like £100 a week or really um, bad pay but you know what I liked the place I liked the people at that time everyone was nice everyone including the, the t team lead or the manager he, he took me under his wing he um, he gave me a kettle and stuff you know for my room that I just moved into really you know nice bloke like just had a lot of lot of time for him and I was I was like 19 at the time and I remember we were having this conversation and he was asking me something and I was talking to him. It was just me and him on our own outside and I suddenly just ran out of things to say. And I was just looking at him like, I don't know what else to say. I didn't say that. Nowadays, I'd probably just say it out loud. Say, no, run out of things to say. I'm bored now. I, I might not. I might not say it like that. I might say it in a funny way, not not to upset them, but <laughs> you're boring. Someone said that to me the other night. It was uh, my friend downstairs, his sister. I phoned her up just to see how she is because it was his birthday last week. And um, she was just chatting only for about a few minutes. And then she said, I'm bored now, bye, and just hung up on me. <laughs> I was like, okay. But she laughed as she said it and just made me, I just found it funny. And technically it's quite rude, isn't it? But just stuff like that makes me giggle. You're boring me now. Bye. I mean, it's something you'd expect from a five-year-old, isn't it? And then they phone you back saying, nah, sorry about that, I was just joking. But no, she didn't phone back. This is Sunday night. I'm still waiting. Still sitting by the phone. The phone hasn't rang. <laughs> it's not fair. So I. That was when I realised like, I'm just looking at this person, and I have nothing to say. I feel very awkward right now, as I was looking at it. It's like there wasn't one. Uh, this is something I've also noticed. Sometimes, I say sometimes because nothing's all the time, is it? Nothing's, you know, every every time, everything, everywhere. It's like there's certain circumstances that can be different. But I've noticed that when I talk to people, there is practically no interest from me in them like there's this I look for it sometimes there's nothing I can't think of anything to say to them that's like asking them about themselves because I kind of generally don't care not not don't care but I'm not interested it's, and I don't know why I wish I could be I wish I could be interested I mean sometimes if I get to know someone and 
sometimes I am interested occasionally but it's very very rare it's very rare you know I've even got to um, make an effort when I talk to the other dog walkers because they've asked me what's his name I say it's Finney and I don't ask them what their dog's name is which is something I should do but at the same time I know that as soon as they say the name I won't hear it well I'll hear it but I won't remember it literally instantly it'll be forgotten because I don't store people's names you know, I've had friends that I didn't know what their names were for years people I've worked with didn't know what their names were even people I've gone out for a drink with and um, the only way I get to really know their name well that's so weird because I might be friends with someone for a couple of years and then they said well why don't I go out for a drink or um, it's, it's a, a company do so well let's meet up before and get, get something to eat okay then well you haven't got my number so I'll give you my number uh, so I'll give them this is the old days where you kind of write down a piece of paper maybe or they'd have their phone and they'd put it in um, that's before we realised that you know phone them then I'll have it but that's more of a recent discovery <laughs> maybe um, and I say oh my name is Jason I say oh, of course I know your name I've known you for years I say okay and then they say uh, they'll say here's my number okay right and I'm waiting for them to tell me what their name is they never do they never do so I have to wait for them to call me and sometimes I still don't know find out what their name is you know I have to go up to someone at the works do and say oh you see him over there or her over there say oh what Joanne or Steve like yeah it's the one with dressed as a clown oh Bobby yeah Bo okay yeah Bobby yeah uh, cool well what what about him oh nothing I just wonder if you could see him that's a bit weird why would you just come up to me and say that I said uh, do you want the honest answer or made up one well the honest, honest answer is okay I said well to be honest with you I didn't know what his name was just as simple as that we met up had had uh, McDonald's on the way here and I've known him for two years I didn't know what his name was that's why and, and she said so what's the made up answer I said what she said, well, you said, do I want the honest or the made-up answer to why did you ask me if I could see him? I said, well, I didn't expect you to actually want both answers. I mean, that's not really fair, is it? You just get one or the other. You don't get two. No, but you do. What? You know, if someone says to you, do you want the first, do you want the good news or the bad news? You don't just give them the bad news and walk away. Or you don't just give them the good news and walk away. You also, you know, you have to give them both. Really? Yeah. Let's see where they... Where, where does it say that? In the rule book. What rule book? Exactly. There isn't one, is there? It's all made up, you know. We'll talk about made up. What were you going to say to me? What, what made up story were you going to say to me then? She said to me. I said, okay... Well, the, you know, the truth is, I didn't know what his name was, uh, but I was wasn't going to tell you that. Um, the made up story I was going to tell you is that I just always liked you and I wanted to talk to you and maybe get to know you a bit. So that bit isn't real. No, no, that that bit just made up. That's a bit rude. Why? Well, if you don't know, no, that's why I said why. No, none, of that, none of that happened. But I do, I don't know what it is. 
there's a real people like to tell me stuff um, people like not not everyone but some people like to talk to me and like to open up to me and stuff and I think I'm a fairly good listener because I'm not listening maybe it's because I'm not I'm not really absorbing it it's just like it's just a bunch of words and oh, that sounds terrible doesn't it now I am listening but at the same time not a huge amount of judgment coming from me because I don't care enough to be judgmental if it doesn't affect me it doesn't really matter other than as long as they're okay and you know I'm I'm can be caring as I am humanish I'm kind of I pretend to be a human and <laughs> I I just don't have any natural interest in people why is that especially the mundane stuff tell me something juicy some, tell me something real and you you might grab my attention if you tell me where you've been like i remember um what did my, my someone sent me a message this couple of years back saying oh we've got to meet up and you tell me all about your holiday like why tell, tell me all about your travels why what 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 do you want to know almost like i'm going to get all excited and talk about all these things that happen like and be jumping around from wall to wall and juggling or something i, I don't know i just that that isn't me it's maybe I'm just not a very excitable person maybe I really am boring like really right like really boring you know like really boring I don't know what do you think I'm not painting myself very well am I painting myself coming across you know what I mean not I don't know it's just that natural sometimes I meet someone and if there's a common interest and if it's something that if it's, if it relates to me basically or relates to a part of my life part of something so if someone just talks about the main road being closed then I have a, a, a tiny little bit of interest because that might affect me you know if a neighbor says oh the i don't know you know if there's there's a, a field is going to be turned into a housing estate i'm going to be interested because it affects me but if they tell me a field in a different town is going to be turned into a housing estate zero interest it's exactly the same topic same subject same conversation but I'm not interested because it doesn't affect me. And I realise that sounds selfish because it probably is, maybe. But I just, I don't know. I just, I think that's why I never, I never really bothered very much at school because the subject matter didn't seem relevant mathematics it's never been something that I particularly valued I mean we had calculators at school you know when I was at school the calculators existed you know when my dad was at school they had abacuses I think and they used to just have chalk and slate and write on them but I um I didn't see the point in learning the 10 times table. It's like, why? I do know. I can work out the 10 times table in my head. It's quite easy, but it's just, it's... It don't, then 
you know, don't start asking me what seven fours are or, you know, to 20, 42, seven fours, seven, 14, 28, 28. So I kind of, see, I didn't even get that right. But like the ones, t the one, that was loud, wasn't it? The one times table I was okay with. Took a while, but it started to click in my head like, wait a minute. After studying it for a few years, it dawned on me like, there's a pattern here. So I went up to. <laughs> oh, this is just ridiculous. So I went, up, <laughs> I went up to my teacher and I said, uh, you know, we've been studying this times table. You know, you gave me the times table when I first started in the first year. And it's now the fifth year of high school. I know that you don't really talk about the times table so much. We were just supposed to learn it and it's been taped into the inside of my textbook for five years and stuff it just dawned on me so I tell her like the one times table is just you just add one every time her eyes glazed over so I was waiting for some no okay I wasn't expecting um, fireworks and balloons and a cake you know, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting, I mean, it'd be nice, but I wasn't expecting any of that fanfare. I didn't expect everyone to carry me on their shoulders all through the town singing, Jason is a genius, la 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 la, and other songs like that. But a little bit of recognition that I'd finally understood something. But no, nothing. Nout. Nout, 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 nout. And then I kind of worked on the second times table. This is probably when I left school, to be honest. Second time. I mean, I think the first times table, once you've, once you've kind of mastered that, I say mastered, Anything over seven can be a little bit complicated, but you know, I mastered it pretty much. And we had the block, you know, one, two, three, four, live, five, so you could kind of see what was what, uh, the graph of the 10 times table. So two, I always found that quite easy, but still had to count it. You know, there's certain things are easy, like one, two's two. Two, two's a four, yeah. Uh, 10 twos are 20. So that's three out done. There's only seven left. So nine twos, because it's 20, you know it's only two left. So two off of that is 18. So that's six left. I could do six, eight, ten. Two, two, four. Am I saying seven? The reason is this, it's less. Two, four, six, eight, it's five. So yeah, two times table is quite easy, even though I just thought there was 10 numbers in it. Blimey. So two times table, two, four. Yeah, so that's, that's easy. Fives times table, I found that probably the easiest one after that like more easier than to two times table to be honest um because it's just five ten oh wait a minute two times table two four six eight ten no it goes up to twenty doesn't it ten twos are twenty oh so no there is there is seven yeah okay I just thought it's been a few years since I last saw that little chart thing. So it would be 10 of each. So 10 fives, 50. One five is five. Two fives are 10. Nine fives, 45, because you take five off. 
So that's like five done already. And then five fives, 25. That's etched in my brain. Five, 10, 15, 20, 20, 25. Four fives, that's easy because two fives are 10, four fives are 20. Three fives, it, it's, it's quite easy to visualize. Five, five, three. Okay, no, wait a minute. Five, two, nine. Five, five, one. Okay, it's pretty easy to visualize, but let's say it's five, it's three fives. So it's um, 15. So that's this easy, it's instant. Uh, and then you got four, the four times table. That's when things got a little bit complicated. And when I was, I didn't understand this at school. It was only when I left school that I figured out how it works. Which may surprise you, considering I was an adult, you know. And I didn't realise the patterns, the patterns of what was going on. Uh, of the time, of the numbers, the patterns of the numbers and how they all kind of move around and st not move around, but how you can just, I don't know, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. So the four times table, one four is four, ten fours are forty, so which means five fours are twenty, two fours are eight. Um, four fours are sixteen. Three fours are twelve. Because I used to, and um, that used to be the money on the door for the nightclub. Went up from ten pound to twelve pound. Ten pound was much easier. Really was. If it was eight pound on a Friday, ten pound on a Saturday, and then went up to ten pound on a Saturday, twelve pound on a fr uh, twelve pound on a Friday rather, ten pound on a Friday, twelve pound on a Saturday, and it's weird the amount of times that you say twelve pound and people said, "What seven? So no twelve. What five? <laughs> twelve. Four pound." Oh, 12. And they weren't haggling. So in, in England, we don't haggle. Lots of people here that perhaps have come from places that were born haggling. Because there's a lot of places around the world that haggle. Or market places and like... We don't do that here. Although, I have been into some shops in the West End when I was younger. Remember, I went into this shop once, looked at a, a jacket. I said, how much is it? He said, how much do you want to pay? I said, no, that's not how it works, mate. How much do you want to pay? Are you a, is this a real shop or are you just just some random customer just walked in just having, having a laugh with me? And I walked out. I said, no, we don't do that here, mate. This, this is not what we do. We don't haggle. How much is it? That's it. I either pay the price or I don't pay the price. How much do you want to pay? I want to pay one pound. That's ridiculous. It's worth over two hundred pound. Well, tell me the price then. Just do. It. It's worth over two hundred pound. Over two hundred pound is not a price, is it? Well, it's over two hundred pound. I said, okay. How much is it? How much do you want to pay? Like, God. So yeah, it was. I actually actually really happened. Maybe not quite how I described it, but. And um, yeah, just never, never liked. I know some people love that stuff, the idea of haggling, and um, yeah, it doesn't appeal to me. I ain't got time. Just what's the price? That's it. 
And to be fair, most of the stuff I guess online now, so I don't even see people. But that's uh, probably, you know, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. And four times twelve, five times so twenty. Five is twenty. Four time five times four is twenty. But you can do it the other way. So that's a good thing. So you got four fives, twenty. So, and then you got four fours. Oh, it's the same either way, isn't it? But then you got three fours or four threes, three six nine. Wait a minute. Three six four three fours. Three fours, four threes, three six nine twelve. Okay, yeah, three six nine twelve. And then there's, do you know what? I got a message the other day, and the person said, "Oh, I like the way you don't you don't do things the way that your contemporaries do it. Uh, I like the way you you talk about your bills." in a really creepy way and then they asked me for help and I'm guessing that was not a real message because you wouldn't use the word creepy would you to describe someone that you liked I don't know if I've still got it I don't know where it was from where it was sent to if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I found it very strange. Because normally people, when they do contact me, they don't say, they don't call me creepy. I mean, I perhaps I am creepy, but I don't think I sound creep. I don't think I. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this creepy? I'm behind the curtains. I'm hiding in the attic. I mean, that's not creepy, is it? I shouldn't really do that because if someone's asleep. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't think I sound creepy, but then people that are creepy probably don't know that they sound creepy because otherwise they might probably stop, wouldn't they? Maybe. <laughs> um... Sixes, the six times table I struggled a little bit with because it was sixes. Six, twelve. It's a six times six. What one six is six. Ten, six, sixty. Of that's always the ten ones. I always find that easiest. The first one in the th in the tenth one. Five. If I have to count to five, six, five, whatever, that's that's a little bit. I mean, I would have to go the other way. So I wouldn't do five sixes, I'd do six fives. But an easier way is just to do half of 60, it's 30. So that's a good one. So that's halfway through. Two sixes are 12. Four sixes, 24. So then three, that's the one. That's the one like, okay, six, 12, and then you realize, and it clicked, something clicked with me, okay? Six, 12, 18. And for some reason, I was able to add six in my head. And it was almost like it was a, maybe a visual thing. And I realized then that I was possibly potentially um, a maths prodigy and that maybe I would change the world with my mathematical mind because I could now do three times six in my head and for some reason it never happened I don't know why I was just too busy doing my 
two pound an hour job <laughs> in London. Anyway, so six, seven. So six was a little bit problematic. And I thought, well, six, sixty, take six off of sixty, it's fifty-four. But six, I always had a little bit, and six, half of sixty is thirty. So it's, it's your five six is a thirty. Six is six is six 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 is thirty six. It's very easy because you just add six under thirty. Thirty take away six is twenty four. Yeah, twenty four. So that's easy. Easier than I made it look. Now seven times table. That was the one. And six I struggled with. Seven, eight, and nine. Those were the ones that I really kind of had an issue with. Like, oh, this is just, ooh, you know, ooh, ooh. and then it clicked. Something clicked. Um, first of all, what am I spending so much time thinking about this for when I'm 20 years old and I have all this energy, I'm slim and I should be enjoying myself. But hey, that's, that's a long story. I realized the pattern of the nine times table because you got one times nine, obviously is nine. Ten times nine is ninety. So what's ninety nine? Ah, oh, it's ten, isn't it? Ten times ten. Ten times ten. So what's ninety nine then? I don't know. So you got nine times, or one times nine. 90 is to 10, half of 90, 45, so that's the 5. I can do 2 times 9 is 18, that's pretty easy. A few years of practice, I got that one. And I was like, oh, I don't know, really know how to do this. It's a little bit complicated. And then I was looking at it, and I realized that if you go backwards, if you go forward rather, you just take one off every time. So it's just basically add 10 and take one off. So 9. 19. 18. 28. 27. So you just add 10 and then take one off. 37. 36. 46. 45. So 45, and it's just like, oh, this is really easy. So I don't even have to know what it is. I just add on. So if it's seven times nine, then it would just be seven times nine is 70 take off nine, so it's 81. Is that right? It's not, is it? <laughs> seven times nine. <laughs> oh my god. Seven times nine is is sixty three. That yeah, because you're taking seven off. 63. 8 times 9 is 72. 9 times 9 is 81. And then 90. So yeah, so it's just, it's quite so. 4 times 9 is 40. Take off 4. So 36. 6 times 9 is 60. Take off six. So fifty four. Forty five. Yeah. 
So that's that's when I saw a pattern in the nine times table. I didn't explain it very well, but and let's face it, there's probably no one listening to this that doesn't already know this anyway, but yeah, we learnt this when we were five. Okay. <laughs> less judgment, please. And I Then I thought, it's the same process for the eights, except it's just two. You just add ten, take off two. And it becomes really easy. So, one, eight is eight. Two eights, eighteen, take off two, so it's sixteen. Three eights, twenty six, take off two, twenty four. Four eights, twenty four, take thirty four, take off two, thirty two. Forty two, I don't know, whatever, you know, it does so saying, it's just like add ten, take off two, add ten, take off two. Seven time table, add ten, take off three. Add 10, take off 3, every time. 6 times table. Add 10. No, not 3, 7. 3, 7. 1. No, what adds... So for 2 times table, add 10, take off 2. So you wouldn't do it because it's easier to do 2. But once you get to like six, it's just a bit easier. Six, then 16, take off six. No, uh, six and 10 is 16. Take off six, so it's 10. <laughs> Oh man. One. Okay, so you're ten, nine, you take off one, eight, you take off two, seven, you take off three, six, you take off four. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I do, I'm just not explaining it well. So six, so 16, take off four is 12. 24, take off 4, 20. <laughs> 6. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I can't believe how rubbish I am at this. 6. I can't believe I'm actually recording myself being so dumb. 6 plus, plus 6 plus 10 is 16 take away 4 12 12 plus 10 is 22 take off 6 that doesn't make sense it's supposed to be 18 6 12 18 6, 12, 22, take off 4. Oh, yeah, 4 is. No, 6. No, 4, not 6. I was trying to take off 6. So it's 4, 18. 28, so it's 4 times 6. 28, take off 4. So it's 24. So 4, 6 is 24. 5, 6 is. 24, 34, take off 4, 30. 5, half of 60 is 5, yeah. And then 6 sixes is 40, take off 4, so that's 36. 7 sixes, 36, 46, take off 4, 42. 
and then 8 is 42 plus 10 52 take off 4 that's 48 58 take off 4 58 54 and then 6 more makes 60 or 54 64 take off 4 60 see and um, I can't believe I've spent an hour talking about this this is ridiculous this is this is a new low even for me and I've got this um, I've got the <laughs> this newspaper website thing that I've paid for so I can use it and access all the newspapers or a lot of the newspapers from all over the world I'm only going to be able to read the ones in, you know in English but there's America Canada Australia uh, New Zealand uh, all the English printed like speaking countries but you've also got English papers in other countries as well that was high pitched as well so United Kingdom regions um, national English has to be in English so there's 500 national so you've got the Observer the Sunday Tele well this is yesterday isn't it Lots of magazines. Why has he got Sunday? I want Monday. It's Monday today. The Guardian. Daily Mail. Daily Telegraph. The Independent. One, two, three. So there's only four. I know for a fact that the yeah the mirror's there as well. The Daily Star. So this is Monday. So let's have a look. What? Monday, Monday, Monday. Okay, so here, these are the news, the national newspapers available for me to read in this country. There's the Herald, which I think is Scotland, isn't it? The Herald and the Scotsman. Then I've got, and I guess both of those are, are daily. I've got the Daily Star. I've got the Daily Mail. Nope, that was yesterday. So forget that. Uh, I've got the Mirror. Uh, I've all. I do have the Daily Mail as well. Uh, Daily Express, the Sunday Telegraph. No, that was a Sunday. Forget that. The Daily Telegraph, rather, and the Guardian. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five national papers in the U well in England, and then there's two in Scotland. I wonder if the sun is in here. Maybe not. Some newspapers, I guess, don't want to be on here because they're they're just for whatever reason. I guess I don't know how it works. Um, if I put in the sun, see whether or not it's available. Sun, Sunday sun. The Sunday sun's in there, or daily. Okay, so the sun on a on a Sunday, but then the sun is on Wednesday, the tenth of April. So why? I wonder why. Latest issue. Wednesday the 3rd of April um, Wednesday the 13th of March from the looks of this latest issue so it's the latest issue from the looks of this they don't get the sun regularly it's like I wonder why that is the midweek sun maybe oh maybe it's not the sun it's the midweek sun Perhaps it's not the, the actual normal Sun newspaper. I don't know. Who knows? So the Sunday people so it's got Sunday papers as well. 
there's lots of Sunday papers uh, so how many papers did I come up with how many was there please somebody tell me how many orange papers was there cancel let's have a look what we got so the Guardian so one Daily Mail two Telegraph three Independent four Express five Mirror six Star seven so seven newspapers plus the two Scottish newspapers so that's nine um, uh, uh, um, that's sort of like a daily a daily basis so that's, that's alright if I just put in just want newspapers uh, newspapers newspapers news okay that's all really I was looking for four four Oh, and I wonder if I can put in the date. Oh. So that's quite a few newspapers. I mean, I'm not sure how to do it. Whether I should read for all this first and then do, you no, know, like kind of. I don't know, not prepare what I'm going to talk about but read through first before like spending ages just sitting here reading them while I'm talking but then I suppose I can edit it can't I so even if the recording is like I think two hours is about the maximum I can do before it cuts off because it cut off the other day um, and started recording again so I have to be a little bit careful that I don't run over. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm thinking that I'm probably not gonna look at any today. But tomorrow I think I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe do it while I re while I eat my breakfast have a look through the newspapers see what's occurring so i got the let's have a look at the daily star okay daily star read so we'll add a few okay i haven't watched tv for 35 years um that's the pope okay i you know, that's weird. I can't imagine. Well, I can't. There's quite a few things I can't imagine the Pope doing. But watching TV is one of them. I just doesn't. See, my nan used to have a picture of the Pope. Is it John Paul the something? He. He was the Pope in the. Nineties and two thousands and stuff. Eighties. So he was a Pope for a long time. I think. I always called him my nan's Pope. Because that's the only Pope I ever really knew. Well, I didn't know him, but yeah, the Pope that I knew of. Danny Dyer appears to be a fan of the Daily Daily Star's cheeky humour. When the former EastEnders star 46 appeared on Channel 4 chat show Late Night Lysit on Friday, he was asked about silly stories written about him over the years. He revealed his favourite is a bonkers tale in the Daily Star about him being lewd at a loaded mag bash. Um, okay, and uh, so cool. What is this? The good thing about what reading this on the iPad is I can open up the page, make it like bigger. Simon Pegg says working with veteran actor Bill Nye, Nye was like hanging out with Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. The Mission Impossible star 54 said his fellow British actor handed out wisdom just like the Star Wars legend. Pegg and Nye, 24, star together in the zombie comedy classic Shaun of the Dead. 
which was about 20 years ago now, blimey. Um, Simon told GQ magazine, we used to sit around in Bill's trailer just listening to him tell us stories about his wilder days. He was just like the Obi-Wan Obi Kenobi of the shoot. Cool. Um, right, so there's... Yeah. It's just a case of finding stuff. I wonder if there's a way... I wonder, if, I wonder, I wonder, is there a way of bookmarking? I'll have to look into that. Because if there's a way of bookmarking stuff and I can kind of save it for future, I don't know. Or I could just, just read for it while I'm talking. That's a way of doing it, I guess. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Pope TV banned for 35 years. All right, so he's, he was banned. Pope Francis has revealed he slapped a ban on himself from watching telly after stumbling across a smutty show. Um, okay. The Supreme Pontiff, 87, said it was so bad for his ticker he hasn't watched a box for almost 35 years. He was a young man then, wasn't he? 35, 45, 55, 65. So 45, 55, 65, 75, 55, 65, 75, 85. Okay, so it's 30, over 27 years ago. He said, I was watching television in the lounge with my fellow priests. It was July the 15th, 1990. Very specific to remember the date. And some scenes of an adult nature, to put it delicately, were being shown. Something that was not good for my heart. Nothing risky, risque, of course, but when I went back to my room... Okay, do we want to read any further? Or are we going to read in between the lines? I said to myself, a priest cannot look at such things. And so the following day, during the Mass for the Feast of the Madonna del Carmelo, I vowed never to watch television again. He said one of the last things he watched was the 1989 Fall of the Berlin Wall. In his new book, Life, My Story Through History, Pope Francis said that there had been a couple of exceptions to this vow. Um, okay. More? More information, please? I missed out a lot of information there. Like, I want to know what show it was that he watched that made him decide that he needed to rush to his room uh, on his own and to, you know, vow never to do that again. Um, secondly, what were the shows that he did see? That were the exceptions to his vow. Hmm. Hmm. That's what I want to know. Anyway. Gladiators maybe. Baywatch. <laughs> Baywatch. Was that it? That was it. He watched Baywatch. Yep. I had a similar thing happen to me. Um... Well, that's it. I think... Oh, That's enough of all that now. I've gone over my allotted time. As per usual. So, thank you for listening. Uh, remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. You do. Lots of love. Bye.